through Matrusama Prabha. That means there is no shade like mother, no resort like mother, no security like a mother, no other ever giving fountain of life. So mother plays an important role. This maternal uh, life of a mother, that is a, that is a motherhood, is uh, a very uh, prominent uh, uh, you know, life which uh, also spreads uh, culture and belief for a, ch a child or the future, future citizens. So coming to this, I really wonder, you all know, a mother and children occupy two-thirds of the population in the entire world. Women with the reproductive age of 15 to 49 were of 21% across the globe and 47 percent of this two-third population is under the age of 15 18 percent are below the age of five years children and three years below there are 12 percent and infants are 4.5 percent so 40 percent of adverse outcomes and pregnancy complications illness or parental disabilities uh, leads to a lot of uh, deaths, out of which 80% of deaths are obstetric death. Pregnant women in developing countries receive insufficient parental care and deliver without the support of proper health workers or professionals. Seven million deaths across the world are believed to result from maternal health problem and their mismanagement. It is surprising that 60 to 70 percent of women in the developing countries during the pregnancies are anemic. They also give, to, give a birth to a low white babies which is due to the underfed situation or early marriages or low nutrition. And this problem is so big and is it high time that most of the organizations are working towards this addressing this problem this problem is very silent and remain uncounted and unreported the who also uh, you know in want to take maternal and child care program to reduce morbidity and mortality reduce prenatal and neonatal neonatal problems mortality, transfer of diseases from mother to child to prevent malnutrition and infections among mother and child uh, through education in health and nutrition and provides sanitation and immunization. So I think uh, this is an opt webinar to educate the women on nutrition and health care during uh, you know, pregnancy and pre and uh, post natal care. I also very surprised to note 50 percent of the girls in the world live under the condition that threaten their health uh, denying them to bear child because of the limited educational attainment restrict their economic participation and equal rights. I think now the government of India has taken a lot of, uh, you know, this one during the last, past one year. They have amended the Pregnancy Act 1971 in order to give the protection for the women and assisted regulatory technology regulations and surrogacy regular regulation bill 2020. They have amended to give a lot of freedom and right of reproduction to the women. Ocean Abion, every quarter they are spending 425 crore to address anemia. And ASHA workers will be visiting five times in the postnatal period of uh, up to 15 months. Matru Vandana, cash incentives are there. Prime Minister Suraksha Matrutva Abion, 9.64 lakh 
antenatal checkups were done laksha labor room quality improvement initiatives were taken care and you all know maternity benefit is extended to 26 weeks so these are some of the initiatives the government has taken but it is a high time that we should also work towards this and this i thank anoka talent solutions for the wonderful uh, session at the opt time and we should educate the women on maternal and child care so i thank all of you for the wonderful you know participation and i hope this will be very fruitful workshop i thank one and all for this great opportunity to inaugurate thank you thank you dr ramesh sir for inaugurating this two days international webinar on maternal and health care good afternoon to all i will i would like to quote the saying of jean ping the welfare and the future of our societies depend on our capacity to remain mobilized so as to improve the health of every mother and child we love mrs suneka hr of anoka talent solutions respected dr ramesh principal of bit institute of technology andhra pradesh respected secretary of nirmala college for women reverend sister Ru dr ruby alangara meri our principal reverend sister dr m helen vice principal reverend sister dr mary fabiola reverend sister dr emelda meri the controller of examination heads of various academic bodies faculty members eminent speakers and loving mothers and participants good afternoon to you all on behalf of mr anil kumar coordinator department of placement cell and myself mrs meenakshi assistant professor department of economics nirmala college for women feel happy to welcome each and every one of you for this two days international webinar on maternal and child care at this moment i place my appreciation and gratitude to bit institute of technology andhra pradesh and nirmala college for women coimbatore the two pioneering institution who stepped forward in organizing this webinar and i extend my appreciation to the faculty members of department of economics for their constant support able guidance and encouragement in making this webinar happen i take this opportunity to make a note about our institution nirmala college for women coimbatore this is a catholic institution founded by reverend father joseph louis ravel in the year 1948 and has a long tradition of service and concern for the socially and economically marginalized section of the society and i proudly say that nirmala college for women coimbatore has been in the forefront of women's education in tamil nadu for the last 72 years the college has emerged as one of the primary institution of learning propagating a higher values of education and learning with the hopes and dreams to achieve the goal knowledge purifies charity enhances the college records a steady at a speculative progress since its inspection in recognition recognition of the high academic performance and service the college was accredited with a grade by nac during the academic year 2003-04 and was conferred the autonomous status in the year 2007 in the year 2015 the college was once again created a grade by nac with a cgpa of 3.62 the college has been recognized under the star college scheme of dpt government of india from 2012 the college was upgraded to the star status in 2017 the college offers a vibrant environment by creating a platform to develop students potential students participation in extension community and outreach programs and vouch for the institution's commitment to social responsibility even amidst this pandemic situation for the past 2 years the reverend sisters of our college generously has committed themselves 
to serve the poor and marginalized by distributing around 1000 food packets every day to the starving public the department of economics with the glorious of 64 years marches with the pride in offering undergraduate and postgraduate program serves to impart knowledge to the students and provides a platform to understand the theories of economics and its application now it is my turn to extend gracious welcome to our respected principal reverend sister dr helen it's your sense of commitment which creates an apart platform for us to grow both mentally and spiritually your goodwill appreciation motivation support and positive vibration has a great impact in molding ourselves for integral dimension of the growth of this great institution in this special occasion with the merging mind we welcome you dear sister i request our respected principal reverend sister dr helen nirmala college for women to deliver the keynote address thank you minakshi thank you sister. i just want to quote from the bible uh, it is the verse from the letter of saint paul to the thessalonians chapter 2 verse 7 but we proved to be gentle among us as a nursing mother tenderly cares for her own children good afternoon to all of you bandit jawaharlal nehru stated that the condition of a nation is well reflected by looking at the status of its women the country in which higher attention has been paid towards women and child care becomes more developed than others women constitute about half of the population and therefore there cannot be happiness and full development as long as they remain unhealthy depressed and exploited women are the epitome of strength love sacrifice and courage women are the primary caretakers of children the main responsibility of a woman is to preserve the human race the progress of a nation depends upon the way the mothers bring upon their children here i would like to quote the words of napoleon give me good mothers and i will give you a good nation it is quite true that great men had great mothers as a mother her position is unique she brings up the children with extra care the first school of a child is the lap of his mother nobody can take a mother's place from the day her child is born to the day she breathes her last a mother lives for her child from feeding them their first morsel curing this first tantrum guiding them through their first heartbreak and being the constant support and shoulder to cry on the duty of a mother is endless children are regarded as the advancement of society they play a big role in the development of the society because they are the future mothers and children not only constitute a large group but they are also vulnerable or a special group which needs special attention throughout the world especially in the developing countries there is an increasing concern and interest in maternal and child care the social economical health and nutritional status of women must be improved similarly physical mental intellectual and nutritional status of children are also to be given importance early childhood care plays an important role in children's development and provides valuable support to families a child deserves quality education from the beginning the quality of a child care has a direct impact on a child's ability to learn to build healthy relationship and to become the best they can be in most of the families around 
women are children's primary caregivers an improvement in women's status besides being vital in its own right a significant positive externalities since the welfare of the children has greater consequence for long term development in all walks of life at this juncture i would like to draw your kind attention towards the condition of covid orphans who lost their parents some of them have lost either one of their parents especially the mothers such children need a conductive atmosphere to grow in life as maternal child maternal and child care is an important public issue in the present scenario i would like to congratulate dr jayanti the head of the department and her team dr krishnaveni dr jacinta marie florence mrs meenakshi mrs nisha edwina reverend sister adikala mary dr anbu selvi dr uma and dr vasanthi for their efforts in organizing this international webinar on maternal and child care indeed the topic for discussion would enable the participants to dwell into the theme and op open new avenues i wish the organizers all success with god's blessings wish you all the best and god bless you participants thank you thank you sister thank you sister for your special address and constant support and encouragement thank you sister thank you the crew is vital but the captain steves dr k jayanti head of the department of economics the captain of the ship supporter and motivator always guiding the department with a clear vision now i request dr k jayanti to introduce the chief guest of this session yes ma'am thank you you are precious in the eyes of the lord says the bible respected reverend sister dr m helen respected dr ramisa mrs sureka today's resource persons mr mrs hema sri and mr blessing kelvin coordinators of this two day international webinar my dear colleagues and friends and dear participants a very good afternoon to all i am happy to introduce our guest speaker mrs hema sri to this virtual gathering in brief mrs l hema sri is a clinical dietitian who has been working in various hospital sectors for more than 5 years She has participated in various national and international seminars and workshops. Her main area of focus includes working with patients who have different disease conditions, planning diet charts, and counseling the patients according to the medical conditions. Regular follow-ups of the patients from time to time, planning menus for hospitalized patients, etc. Currently. Ma'am was working as senior clinical dietitian in three top hospitals, Maldives, from 2019 onwards. Previously, Madam has served as clinical dietitian at the Department of Nutrition and Dietetics in PSG Hospital, Kambeto, from 2017 to 2019, and as clinical dietitian at the Department of Nutrition and Dietetics in Sunshine Hospitals, Hyderabad, from 2015 to 2017. Madam Hema Sri did her Master of Science in Clinical Di Nutrition and Dietetics at PSG College of Arts and Science, Coimbatore, Bachelor of Science in Clinical Nutrition and Dietetics at Kasturi Bhav Gandhi Degree and PG College for Women, Hyderabad. To her credentials, Ma'am has completed many certified courses like course on Psychology of Everyday, Nutrition Support in Renal Diseases, Nutri Expert Dietitians Digital Master Class. certificate course in sports nutrition nutrition education program on mother health and nutrition a course on nutrition export network nutrition support delivery identifying and managing feeding tubes and so on madam was active member in indian dietics association telangana chapter india and also in the indian association for pa parental and eternal nutrition and also in renal nutrition india a co group of indian association of parental and eternal nutrition we are so happy to have you ma'am for this virtual international webinar on maternal and child care 
and we are very eager to hear you, ma'am. Over to Hema Sri, ma'am. Ma'am, now the session is yours, ma'am. Thank you, uh, Mrs. Jayanti, ma'am, for the kind introduction. Uh, good afternoon, all. I'm very much uh, happy to be associated with Anok Talent Solutions, uh, who has been co co collaborated with the Nimala College for Women and with Institute of Technology. I thank you, uh, Ms. Daniel Kumar, who's been my friend, for believing me in conference and giving me this session to conduct. So without any further go, I'll start presenting my slides. Are you able to view my slides? Ma'am, now you can present, and I just request you to mute your uh, presentation audio. Perfect now, yes. It is visible now. You are able to see now? Yes, yes ma'am. Ma yeah, thank you. Yeah, so today uh, I'll be talk, uh, talking on impact of nutrition on maternal health. So these are the topics which I'm going to be covering today. So the importance of nutrition during pregnancy and nutritional needs which are required during the pregnancy and mainly the micro and the macronutrients which are essential during the pregnant time and nutritional needs during lactation and importance of exercise and importance of colostrum and micro and macronutrients during lactation and food safety. So coming to the introduction. So nutritional requirements, as you know, during the pregnancy time increases tremendously because energy requirements and all the micro and macronutrients are on the higher side. And lactation as the expectant or the nursing mother not only has to cherish, nourish herself, but also the growing fetus and the infant who is being breastfed. So this is how a pregnancy plate will look, but this I'll explain you at the end of the session. And coming to the introduction of pregnancy. Uh, pregnancy is a period of great physiological stress for women. So as she's having a nurturing fetus growing inside her body. So there are so many changes which occurs in the mother's body, which will influence all the nutrient requirements for the mother and the efficacy so that the body uses as, as much as possible nutrients which is being taken orally. So these are the factors which mainly affects during the pregnancy. First is the basal metabolic rate and next comes the gastrointestinal changes and next comes the changes in the body fluid. I'm sorry to interrupt. I think uh, yeah. PPT is not on flow. Okay. Yeah, perfect, perfect. Now it can be seen. Uh, but it's not in the full screen. Are you that able goes to fine. see the screen? This is fine? No. Yeah, this is fine, this is fine. 
Okay, fine. Ask her to switch to the PPT mode. Yeah, sometimes it is coming errors. That is the reason uh, we are on this now. Next to the sound mode, you can ask yes, her to slide mode. Slide mode. Is this okay? Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. And then coming to the base cell metabolic rate, base cell metabolic rate is uh, basically like how much calories is required for each and every individual. There is certain set of calories depending upon their ideal body weight. But in the pregnancy time, you, for the fetal growth and the development, the uh, base cell metabolic rate increases by 5% during the first trimester because there is minimal growth of the fetus in the first three months. But when it comes to the second and the third trimester, it increases into the double, triple amounts, which is mostly 12%. So basically, this increases the total energy requirement on daily basis. Next comes the gastrointestinal changes. These are very much common in the pregnancy women. So the main changes will include nausea, constipation, and vomiting. These are the classic signs of every pregnant woman. In later trimester of pregnancy, absorption of nutrients like vitamin B12, iron, and calcium increases in order to meet the increased needs of the mother and the fetus. So that's why we keep on telling before you're planning for a pregnancy, also make sure that you take the required iron and folic acid supplements so that on the later stages of the pregnancy period, you will not be lacking in your hemoglobin levels or iron stores in your body. Next comes the changes in the body fluid. The mother's blood volume also increases as it has to carry more appropriate nutrients to the fetus and metabolic waste away from the fetus. So with increase in the blood volume, the concentration of the plasma proteins, hemoglobin, and the other blood constituents is lower. lower. So increase in water intake and the fluid intake should also be on the higher side. Next, weight gain during the pregnancy. This again depends upon the body mass index. So we have categorized into underweight, normal, overweight, and obese. So the women who are underweight, who are less than 18.5 kg per meter square, their weight gain can be up to 12.5 to 18 kgs. For a woman who are having normal BMI from 18.5 to 24.9, they can gain weight up to 11.5 to 16 kgs. Those who are overweight, so from 25 to 29 kg per meter square, they can gain weight up to 7 to 11.5 kgs. And those who are obese, those are having BMI more than 30 kg per meter square. So they can gain up to 5 to 9 kgs. Next, why good nutrition is important during the pregnancy? Because eventually the mother has to nurture the fetus and the health of the newborn depends mainly how much the mother has taken the nutritional status during her pregnancy period and prior to her consumption. So a well-nourished woman prior to consumption enters pregnancy with reserve of several nutrients that meets the needs of the growing fetus without affecting her own health. So and also suffers fear complications during pregnancy and there are chances of pre and there are few chances of premature birth. So if a woman, sorry, if a pregnant woman is fed well, so the complications will be lowered and the premature births will also be lowered and eventually she'll give birth to a healthy child. Maternal diet during pregnancy has a direct influence on the fetal growth and the size of the fetus and the health of the newborn. So poor diet during pregnancy mostly affects the mother's health and the malnourished mothers provides nutrients to the fetus as at the expense of her own tissues. So if a mother is being malnourished, if a BMI is less than 18.5 kg per meter square, so eventually all the nutrients will be drawn from her side and it will be all the tissue will also be wasted and all those will be going only to the baby, but not for the mother. So the poor nutrition during pregnancy increases the risks of complications such as prolonged labor because we have heard women who have been in labor for more than 24 to 48 hours. So the, the this might be the cause of poor nutrition, which has happened during the pregnancy phase two. So inadequate diet during pregnancy affects the health of the baby during early infancy. So reducing early stages of infant life where the nutrition has been low, it will affect the health of the baby directly. So if the infant survive 
they develop nutritional diseases. So, so these are the most common nutritional diseases which we will see in the infants. Mostly it will be anemia and rickets. Rickets is mainly caused by due to the uh, decrease in the calcium and the vitamin D develop, uh, levels in the body or suffer from infectious diseases due to lack of good immunity. Uh, you would have seen babies who catch a common cold and flu easily. Like it will be lasting for weeks and for months, like in, month, in, a, in a month, they'll be getting like two or three times. So these are the risks where the immunity is very low. So this all things depend upon the mother, how she has started nurturing from herself the time she got pregnant. That's why good nutrition is really essential during the pregnancy. And coming to the nutritional needs during the pregnancy. During pregnancy, the nutrient needs. Why this nutrient is really important? To develop maternal organs such as uterus, placenta, and breast tissue. So these are the main organs which will be developed during the pregnancy. To build up body reserves which will be utilized at the time of delivery and lactation. So whatever you are eating, whatever you are feeding to the body, this will be utilized at the later stages of the life. So during the delivery and the lactation time. So during, we had three trimesters in pregnancy, as most of you all know. So when coming to the first trimester, there is not that much significant increase in the fetus size. So only qualitative improvement in nutrients is required during the first three months. Because most women will be experiencing gastrointestinal changes like vomiting, nausea, constipation. And sometimes there are women who uh, face diarrhea also. So that time, the nutrition intake will also be very low. And feeding them is a very Hercules task. But when coming to the second and third trimester, most of the gastrointestinal symptoms go still will be there for some women, but not for most of them. So that time, there is a triple and the double more chances of the nutrients increase will be there. Then first coming to the major nutrient energy. Why energy requirements is very much needed during the pregnancy, mostly for the growth of the fetus and development of placenta and maternal tissues, as I told earlier, to meet the needs for increased basal metabolic rate, to deposit fat, which will be used during lactation. Uh, so an additional of 350 kilocalorie per energy is required during the course of the pregnancy. So for example, if the pregnant woman is 55 kgs, so we have categorized into sedentary, moderate, and heavy worker. Sedentary workers are the who does mostly the uh, job which they have is sitting most of the time, most of the prolonged period of time, they'll be sitting. So for them, if it's going to be 1,900 calories, which is required on daily basis, additional 350 we can give them. And if it's going to be a moderate worker who will be like walking for most of that time and will not be sitting mostly in the desk part, we'll be giving them two to three zero, three zero calories plus additional 350. And for heavy worker, like uh, uh, women who work in the construction site, so for them, the calorie requirement will be very much higher when compared to the sedentary and moderate. So their energy requirements will be 2850 additional to 350. These requirements are calculated based on the body weight for 55 kgs, but it again differs from the body weight of the pregnant woman from person to person. This is just an example I have given here. And next, coming to the protein and the fat requirement during the pregnancy. And these are the sec uh, next most major requirement during the pregnancy. So protein requirement during the pregnancy. During the first trimester, there is a normal requirement for the protein. So if the, uh, if the pregnant woman is 55 kgs, maybe 55 grams of protein is OK. But it, when it comes to the second and the third trimester, there is an additional increase in the protein. So it will be 9.5 grams for the second trimester plus 22 grams extra for the third trimester. So these are an additional. That's why I've added a plus to it. So when compared to the normal requirement, this will be an your topping of the nutrients. So during pregnancy, additional protein is eventually required mostly for the growth of the fetus, development of the placenta, enlargement of the maternal tissues, and increased maternal blood volume, and mostly for the amniotic fluid formation. And protein reserves pre pre prepares the mother for labor, delivery, and lactation, which will be used during the later stages of life. So when coming to the what are the protein-rich foods, these are the things we need to mainly concentrate. So those will include milk and milk products, eggs, fish, lean meat, cereals and pulses, and soya. And come, come, next, coming to the fat. So fat, we are mainly concentrating on the good sources of fat, which is uh, mainly coming from the omega-3 fatty acid, which is required during the pregnancy. That is required for 300 milligrams per day. So the omega-3 fatty acids like uh, 
DHA, docosa hexonic acid supplementation during pregnancy is essential for brain development and prevents preterm births. It is required for fetal visual development also, and it also reduces the incidence of heart disease and any heart disease related deaths to infants. So people who are vegetarian may go for the omega-3 supplementation only when you're consulted with a doctor or a dietitian so that the prescribed amount will be made. So please don't go for over-the-counter supplements on yourself and please don't land up in any dangerous issues. So people who are non-veg, mostly you can include tuna, sardines and mackerel. These are the good sources of omega-3 fatty acids. And next, and this is the one more important. These are the micronutrients when coming to the calcium. During pregnancy, additional calcium is essentially needed for the growth and development of the bones as well as the teeth of the fetus. And calcium intake will also decrease the risk of hypertension, preeclampsia in mothers, and low birth weights, and chronic hypertension in newborns. Hypertension is one of the common symptoms where most of the pregnant women faces because they do they get too much stress, they get too much pressure, and we don't know, and they keep on thinking like how the layer delivery is going to happen. So these are the things which occurs from time to time during the pregnant woman. On top of it, if the food requirement, everything is good, these things can be rolled out. And mainly calcium is required for the bone strength and for proper muscle contraction during the labor. And calcium also prevents in blood clotting. So if the calcium intake is inadequate during pregnancy, then the calcium is mobilized from the maternal bones to the fetus. So obviously the calcium will go from the mother to the fetus if the calcium stores are very low in the body. And thus it will uh, decrease the mineralization of maternal bones leading to easy fracture. So there will be easy breakage of the bones in the future when the calcium requirement is not during the prime of the pregnancy. So the recommended daily allowance is 1000 milligrams per day for calcium for pregnant ladies. So the foods will include the milk and the milk products and green leafy vegetables, nuts and seafood. Next, coming to the important one, iron requirement where most of the women are deficient in this and mostly Indians are deficient in the iron. During pregnancy, iron is essential for the fetal growth and expansion of maternal tissues, including the red blood cell, which mainly counts the hemoglobin and maintaining additional iron content of the placenta. And we need to build the iron stores for the fetus liver also. So compensate and to compensate blood loss during delivery. So the iron stores are really important. So these are the foods which will, in, these are rich in iron, which will include mainly the red meat, eggs, fruits fruits we have watermelon is the highest iron content fruit and we have raisins dates and figs and coming to the proteins we have the lentils chickpeas soybean drumstick leaves mint leaves curry leaves cauliflower leaves and spinach and nuts so basically all green leafy vegetables are rich in iron and we have got a few pulses and we have got all the non-veg sources which are very much rich in iron as displayed in the picture these are the sources of iron rich foods and the daily requirement will be 40 milligram per day. Next, coming to the minerals requirement during the pregnancy. So we are mainly concentrating on the folic acid, the zinc and the iodine. So the folic acid requirement for a pregnant woman will be like 500 milligrams per day. So during pregnancy, maternal blood formation increases. So thus folic acid requirement gradually increases. So this mainly helps in development of baby's brain and the spinal cord. So the folic acid supplementation during pregnancy prevents fetal neural tube defects and improves birth weight of the fetus. So as I told earlier, when you're planning for a pregnancy, is, is it, it will be good from a, a pregnant lady to start on the folic acid supplementation before conceiving and during the pregnancy time also, you can continue with the folic acid supplementation. So these are the foods which will mainly include in folic acid are green leafy vegetables, cabbage, eggs, tomatoes, cooked and the dried beans. And next when coming to the zinc, the recommended diet allowance is 50 milligrams per day. So this is mainly required for the synthesis of the nucleic acids where the DNA and the RNA as it has an important role in reproduction. So the zinc deficiency during pregnancy can cause poor pregnancy outcomes and abnormal deliveries including congenital malformations. So zinc is also a very much important mineral. 
And these are the foods which mainly include seafood and nuts. So the nuts include almonds, pistachios, walnuts, and cashew nuts. Next, coming to the iodine, which is nothing but salt. That's the day, uh, recommended allowance is 250 milligrams per day. So the lack of iodine also causes still birth, birth defects and decreased fetal brain development. So the foods like either salt, milk, cheese, eggs, fish, and yogurt has got required iodine in it. So when you don't find the foods which is not available, so adding a little amount of extra salt is also fine. Please keep checking your BP levels and your sodium levels from time to time so that you will not be deficient in the iodine in the body. And when coming to the vitamins requirement during the pregnancy, these are the vitamins we are going to focus. Vitamin A, D, K, B12, C, and vitamin B6 and other vitamin B. So vitamin A, the recommended allowances is 900 milligrams per day, otherwise called as a retinol. So this is mainly required to protect the fetus from any immune system problems. So vitamin A mainly protects us from blindness, infections, and death. Mostly the foods which covers are mangoes, carrots, bell peppers, otherwise called as capsicum, or sweet potato. And vitamin D is very, very essential. And 90% of the Indians are very much deficient in vitamin D, where a recent study says. So it is required for formation of fetal bones. So this mainly includes the milk, seafood, fish, eggs, mushrooms, and cheese. So additional exposure to sunlight is required on daily basis. So please... It's not only for the pregnant ladies, but also for the normal individuals. Please get exposed to the sun. So the timing which you mainly include is like morning 10 to afternoon 2. Earlier, it used to be the early morning sunlight, but now the studies have changed. So please wear a light clothing or stand in a balcony or like if you want, you can go and get the enough sunlight during the 10 and 15 minutes in a day. And next, when coming to the vitamin K, it is mainly required for the normal coagulation of blood and prevents newborn infants hemorrhages so that there will not be any blood clots or any blood loss will not be there. So the vitamin K foods will include mainly the green leafy vegetables, the cabbage, cauliflower, broccoli, beans, green peas, and soya bean. And next, coming to the vitamin B12, their requirement is 2.4 milligram per day. This is mainly help helpful for in brain and nervous system development of the fetus vitamin b12 is not directly seen in the foods we have to just fortify so fortifying it we have to just add these vitamin b12 to the foods so we can mostly see in the fortified breakfast cereals eggs milk and milk products so whenever you're going to buy a product from the markets make sure that you read the nutrition label and ingredients so that you will know if it's going to be a fortified food product whether we have the vitamin b12 in there then you can go and buy it next coming to the vitamin c it increases iron absorption and also helps in the fetal growth deficiency in vitamin c increases the chances of preterm delivery so vitamin c foods includes oranges lemon kiwi guava, tomatoes, capsicum, and broccoli. So whenever you're going to have an iron-rich food, make sure that you have vitamin C foods along with that. For example, if you're going for five almonds or five cashew nuts, make sure that you have like one glass of lemon juice. So in this way, the vitamin C requirement and iron absorption will also be met. Next, coming to the vitamin B6, the recommended allowance is 2.3 milligram per day. This is required for the normal fetal development and positive pregnancy outcomes so that you will not be having any issues during the labor. And when coming to the vitamin B1, the allowance is 1.4 milligram per day, B2, 1.4, and B3 is 18 milligram per day. So as the total energy requirement increases, so as your calorie increases, the B vitamin supplement also increases. So next coming to the factors which you have to consider during your pregnancy. So these are the four factors, caffeine, smoking, alcohol, and drugs. So coffee should be avoided during pregnancy as it can cross the placenta and enter fetal circulation and increases the risk of miscarriages, premature deliveries, and small for date infant, that is premature births. So caffeine, most of them, there are individuals who have uh, migraine issues and headache issues who are too much dependent on coffee and their coffee addiction is really high so when it comes to the pregnant ladies they do ask us like how much coffee we can take so maximum we can suggest is one cup per day but that also should not be taken next coming to the smoking during pregnancy smoking results in placenta abnormalities and fetal damage 
including prematurely and low birth weights. So smoking also impacts oxygen and nutrient transport through the placenta, which will obviously reduce the blood flow. And next comes to the alcohol. So during pregnancy, alcohol consumption can also cause low birth infants and growth retardation and fetal impact central and nervous system performance, including the growth retardation. So mostly if you're going to have you know, smoking women or women who take too much of alcohol, it's right time to stop when you're planning for pregnancy or during the pregnancy phase. And when it comes to the drugs, so during pregnancy, drugs consumption leads to poor prenatal weight gain. So if you're going for over-counter the drugs, which the doctor has not prescribed, and if you're going to take drugs on your own, it will gradually affect your weight and it will prolong your labor or the labor will be very short or the operative delivery and other perinatal problems will also occur. And next, coming to the importance of exercise. Uh, staying healthy during pregnancy includes adequate rest, appropriate nutrition, and exercise. It's not like we are not supposed to do any activities during your pregnancy time. At least like minimal or a normal activity should be there on daily basis to maintain your ideal body weight. Next, the benefits of doing exercises helps in preventing mainly the pelvic and the back pain will not be there because there are women who suffer from severe back pain during pregnancy phase. And it also reduces the risk of gestational diabetes. Gestational diabetes is nothing but the sugars which will fluctuate only during your pregnancy time. So by doing exercises and by maintaining a good diet, you can control your gestational diabetes and hypertension as I told earlier. And it also improves heart functions and it reduces constipation, swelling and bloating and ensure proper weight gain is there. So activities like prenatal yoga, swimming and walking for 30 minutes a day can be good. So begin with just have a small five minute walk in the park and see how you feel. Don't feel like if you're having like too much of breathlessness issues, please don't exaggerate yourself. And gradually you can go up to 30 minutes of physical activity. So before you start doing any physical activity during your pregnancy time, ensure that you consult a doctor and see a proper certified trainer so that you don't land up in doing any other forms of activity. Next come the pregnancy phase is over. So next coming to the lactation. So we are going to talk about the nutritional requirements post delivery. So why nutrition is required during the lactation time? During lactation, adequate nutrition is required as the infant derives all its nutrition from its mother's milk. So only with the mother's milk, the infant is going to survive for the first six months. So during the first six months, the mother's nutrition is also at risk. So giving her adequate and good amount of nutrition is really essential. And mother needs extra nutrition as she has to nourish a fully developed and rapidly growing infant. So the extra nutrients to meet baby's need in addition to his is her own requirements. Any inadequacy in mother's diet will influence both the quality and the quantity of the mother's milk secreted. So if there is going to be a deficient in the diet, there will not be proper milk secretion and the baby's diet is also at risk. So if the mother's diet is inadequate, then she will have to draw her own body reserves to meet the needs of lactation at the cost of her own health. So that, as I told you earlier, if there's going to be a deficient, whatever the uh, nutrients has been stored in the body previously, it will be drawn during the lactation period. And if everything goes out, her health will be at own risk. Nutrient deficiency, deficiency can lead to lower levels of nutrients in the mother's milk also. So when coming to the colostrum, so colostrum is the first expressed milk immediately after the delivery. This is considered to be the super food for the newborn. Why it is considered, we'll have a look at it. So within minutes of the birth of the baby, breastfeeding should be given. Breastfeeding should be given and should be given on demand. The first food the breasts make is the colostrum, a sticky yellow fluid that contains everything your baby needs to transition to life outside your body. So this helps your baby build a strong immune system as it contains antibodies and white blood cells. And it also creates a tough coating on your baby's stomach and intestine to keep germs from causing illness. And it acts as a laxative to help your baby pass meconium. That is the first poop your baby passes. And it also helps to prevent jaundice and get rid of harmful waste products and gives your baby's brain, eyes and heart the right blend of nutrients to grow. And the colostrum contain high levels of proteins, 
salts, fats, and vitamins for complete nutrition. Complete nutrition that your baby's stomach can easily digest, and it's a perfect food for your newborn and will prevent the blood low blood sugar in newborns because there are many babies born with high uh, blood sugar which is very less. So when by giving colostrum, these are the things you should keep it in mind. So this is the image of colostrum, how it will good, how it will look, sorry, and the breast milk. So the colostrum is the first thick liquid which will be secreted for the first day, first three days after the labor. And afterwards comes the normal breast milk. Next, coming to the nutritional requirement during lactation. So again, we are going to concentrate on the major requirements like the energy and the protein. The lactating mothers needs additional energy for production of milk. So during the pregnancy, approximately 600 to 850 ml of milk is secreted daily. So the energy content of the mother's milk and efficacy of conversion of food energy into milk energy determines the energy requirement of a lactating woman. So how much the mother intake is, that much the breast milk will be expressed. So the mother intake is low, the breast milk express will also be very low. During the first six months of lactation, apart from the daily energy requirements, she will be requiring an addition of 600 kilocalorie per day. And during the six to 12 months of lactation, an additional of 520 kilocalorie per day is required. Why it is higher in the first six months is the one, the baby will be having only the breast milk. And when coming to the six to 12 months of lactation, the baby will start having the weaning foods. So the weaning foods are what are the foods we are going to start initially after the six months. So the energy demands gradually lowers. Then coming to the protein requirement. So during lactation, protein needs also increases as the mother's milk contain only 1.1 gram of protein per 100 ml. So for proper milk production, Adequate amounts of good quality protein or good quality protein should be included in the mother's diet. Again, for the first six months, an additional of 16.0 gram of protein per day. And for the six to 12 months, it's going to be 13.2 gram of protein per day. As I told you, what are the protein-rich foods in the, in the earlier slides? You can try following that after your labor also. Next, come to the calcium. Calcium needs increases by 200. When it was during the pregnancy time, it was 1000. But after the labor, it is going to be 1200 milligrams per day. Mainly additional calcium is required for the breast milk secretion. And it was also essential to enable the retention of calcium in the breast milk. So adequate dietary calcium intake during lactation meets the mother's calcium needs and extra calcium requirement for breast milk production. That's why the additional calcium is required for a uh, mother. Next, coming to the iron, the daily storage is 23 milligrams per day. Requ Sorry, the daily recommended is 23 milligrams per day. So the iron requirement during lactation is the addition for the mother and is required to make up the iron secreted in the breast milk. So most of the lactating women have lactation. I mean, your lactation amenorrhea is nothing but there where the women will not be bleeding and she will be only breastfeeding. So during that time, the iron can be saved, like one milligram of iron per day can be saved, which would be otherwise lost in the menstrual break. So the requirement of iron is the same as a non-pregnant woman after she has delivered the baby also. Next, coming to the diet and the feeding patterns. Lactating mother requires larger quantities of the bodybuilding and protective foods and additional energy yielding foods to facilitate the formation and secretion of breast milk. And the fluid intake should also be increased as fluids are essential for adequate quantity of milk production. So at least um, a minimum of two liters of water intake should be there. So water means it's not only for drinking water. You can add some fruit juices to your diet. You can add some coconut water to your diet. You can add some soups. So these are the things that mainly the fluid will cover up. And no food should be restricted except highly spicy and strongly flavored foods. Why we are asking is to restrict because this will have a direct influence on the breast milk. And if the baby is being fed, it will be very repulsive for the baby and the baby's digestive system can't accept. it. That's why we are uh, asking the mothers to follow as not to have a strong spicy and uh, oily foods during the first six months. Next, nutrient needs of lactating mothers are also greatly enhanced during lactation. Hence, she should have snacks in between the meals. So if you're going to have three major meals like breakfast, lunch, and dinner, in between you can have like three minor meals also. In the minor meals, maybe you can try including some fruits, some nuts in your diet, or else you can try having some uh, boiled chickpeas. Those things you can try including in the diet. 
it's not necessary that you it's mandatory to have snacks but whenever you feel hungry it is okay to have snacks during that time but these will be very much required for the body as you're breastfeeding the baby and the demands are also high so when next coming to the food safety this is very very much important now as everyone of us is facing covid issues so always practice good food hygiene so when buying food please ensure that you check the expiry dates on food and when eating out check that raw vegetables salads and unpeeled fruits have been washed in clean water so we can't go and check each every restaurant or e eat out like whether they are washing the vegetables or the salads or the fruits are clean or not so it's best if you wash vegetables and fruits from the market and you please try uh, cooking and eating at home and avoid foods if you're not sure about their safety or cleanliness for example avoid whipped ice cream or ready to eat salad so ready to eat salads why we ask them to avoid is we don't know how it's been handled and whether the individual who has handled has got clean hands or not so it's better you avoid all those foods when you're eating outside and when coming to the storing food store foods at the correct temperature and also separate raw foods from the ready to eat foods so that the cross contamination of the foods will not happen and store raw foods always at the bottom shelves of your fridge next when preparing food wash and dry your hands thoroughly before touching food and after handling raw food particularly meat chicken and fish because there are microorganisms all over now so it's better you wash your hands and after you have clean them thoroughly also you please maintain a proper hygiene wash raw fruit and vegetables in a clean water before eating it's advisable to wash the fruits vegetables in warm water and check expiry dates on food so whenever you're going to food up sorry whenever you're going to prepare a food make sure that you check the expiry dates because uh, there will be so many items stored in our household that we'll even forget to check the expiry dates and we just cook and uh, uh, eat them and the after effects will be worse and heat ready meals according to their instructions on the packaging until they are steaming hot through so whenever you're going to go for a ready to eat food please make sure that you read the adequate instruction and cook according to the instructions given in the wrapper cook all meat chicken and fish until it is well done so if it's going to be a half cooked meat part again there are going to be issues in your stomach and never reheat food more than once so if you're going to store oil for more than two or three days it's better you don't use them don't use food which has been cooked for more than 24 hours so please ensure whatever the foods which is being prepared in less than 24 hours to consume so and these are the general points have included to prevent the spread of the covid 19 uh, and i know like everybody will be aware of this but still to make this awareness happen because there are many people still they are thinking these are not necessary actions to be taken so these are the general points i'm just focusing on wash your hands frequently with soap and clean running water at least for 30 seconds and please make sure that you wash your hands with soaps or hand sanitizer and ask your family members to wash your hands with soap and clean running water at least for 20 to 30 seconds and wear a medical mask when available or a cloth face covering when feeding or carrying for your baby and for the mothers who are breastfeeding and who has been tested with covid positive they do they still can breastfeed the baby by wearing a mask by wearing a surgical mask or an n95 mask and by taking proper precautionary measures so that your baby will not be affected with covid positive and do not touch your face nose or eyes and ask all the family members other to avoid touching their face nose or eyes constantly so if you or the others have like cough or sneeze please cover your mouth and nose with your bent elbow or use a tissue to prevent droplets from spraying so safely dispose of used tissues after use and wash your hands with soap and clean running water clean frequently touch surfaces with soap and water if you have or suspect of covid 19 
so proper cleaning of households is required on daily basis and physical distancing is a must at least three meters and ask family members to stay at home and avoid going to market or crowd places or any other public places so even if there is going to be a pregnant woman or a lactating mother please make sure that you're not in contact with the people who are going out and there are high risks that the co uh, there are chances that you might also be affected if there is one of the family members being affected in the and if someone needs to go out to buy food, fetch water, buy medicines or visit the health center, avoid crowded places and practice physical distancing as much as possible. Any questions? I thank Mrs. Hema Shri for her stimulating speech. As ma'am have covered various nutrition requirements during pregnancy and lactation, she also gave a brief diet chart for young mothers. She also ended with food safety measures during this COVID. Once again, I thank you ma'am for your wonderful session. The forum is open for question and answer, if any. Dear participants, feel free. The forum is open for question and answer session. Requesting the participants, if at all you have any questions related to uh, nutrition, uh, yes, the the food, etc. Ma'am, hey, ma'am, ma there is a question in the chat box. Why the vaccination is getting delayed? Vaccination is getting delayed. I don't have a proper answer for this. Um, Actually, to be honest, she is from Maldives. I don't think so. I mean, uh, here in, uh, Mal uh, in Maldives, they have started uh, giving, like I'm generally telling for the pregnant uh, women, they have started giving vaccination for the pregnant women and the lactating mothers. And uh, here, the most of the population have been vaccinated. And since India's population is really high, the vaccination is being delayed. That's how I see it. And uh, when it was initially... Uh, instructor to take vaccines there were many people who were hesitant about it because there has been many myths with people that this vaccination will be like too much side effects will be there but uh, from my point i say vaccination is really safe so whatever vaccine you get if it's going to be a covid shield or covaxin and soon there is going to be sputnik 5 available in india and if it's going to be a pfizer vaccine please go and take it that will be my kindest suggestion please don't be hesitant so and a hundred percent i'll tell you if you're getting covid vaccines also there are chances people will get covid positive it's not like it is completely we can prevent it see if you're going for a chicken pox vaccine because we have all been vaccinated for a chicken pox right but eventually during our childhood or during our entire period of life we'll get chicken pox once so that's how this vaccines also works so but the symptoms can be controlled that's also if instead of going and uh, landing up in prolonged hospital stays, these we can maintain a home quarantine and the symptoms, these things can be controlled. That's why it's essential to vaccine. I think most of the questions are related to vaccination. Uh, uh, just to add up, uh, I have only one thing. Regarding the vaccination, we do have a gynecologist for tomorrow's session. So Dr. Raja Rajeshwari, I think probably she'll be explaining about this vaccination for both the uh, pregnant ladies and even for the mothers. So I think these uh, questions can be posed for the tomorrow session, if you don't mind, to all the participants. But apart from this, I also request, if at all you have any questions regarding the nutrition or food plans for pregnant, etc., uh, the forum is open. You can ask any relevant questions on nutrition to the speaker.
there is a question for uh, uh, nutrition for kids uh, by mrs sindhu ji uh nutrition for kids in the sense are you for because nutrition for kids varies from age to age because from one year two year three years the demands keeps on increasing so focusing just on nutrition for kids will not be that much ideal and we need to take a separate powerpoint for it any other questions please be free, feel free to ask i'm ready to answer and also just to add up uh, mm -hmm. to all the participants if at all uh, you want a separate uh, uh, chat that chat especially for the kids or even for the pregnant women uh, you also can contact the coordinators of the event probably they can uh, tie up with uh, Uh, Mrs. Hema Narayan or uh, Mrs. Gayatri, so they can create a separate chat for you and they can help you out in this. So we'll figure out on this because uh, it purely depends and uh, probably uh, based on the information and inputs which we received from uh, Hema Narayan Gayatri. So like uh, we do had a call uh, recently about this. So based on the conversation between uh, the participant, individual participant on the dad chat, they will prepare a separate chat and provide to you. that we can do it because it depends on the age to age uh uh ma'am there is a uh, question from uh, shiba ma'am the please send ppt notes it will be very useful to you so if you don't mind if you agree maybe you can just share it to us yeah we'll sure we can share it and as the session is also recorded i think uh, it can be shared yeah. no issues yeah yeah okay. thank you Uh, Shiba, ma'am, you can just uh, uh, send us a separate uh, mail ID to her. We'll be sharing it. No issues. And would you have a question from uh, Uma Balachandran ji? Like a diet chart for kids during this pandemic period. Uh, ma'am, that's what. Like as I said, uh, uh, we will have a separate call on this individually. So if you're okay, then the coordinator will uh, tie up with uh, uh, Hema Narayan or Gayatri, ma'am. So they'll work on. They can help you out on this. Good evening, Hema, ma'am. This is Disha here. Yeah, good evening, Jisha. Tell me. Yeah, ma'am, I have a doubt. Uh, the baby is five months old, and okay. what is the time gap that we have taken for feeding the kids? Because uh, most of the time she is sleeping. Okay. Uh, even if we start feeding, na, uh, she is mm. uh, about to sleep. Even mm. two or uh, not even five minutes, she is going to have a feed. Okay. So, what's the best method that we can do? Because most of the doctors they say that the pumping method is not that good because the production of milk will not be developed. The supply mm -hmm. will not be there. Okay. So what should we do for that? So I just asking for a five month old baby or for the mother? No, five month old baby. What should, what is the uh, step that we can take? I'm asking you. See, uh, always you just go with the mantra like breastfeeding should be on demand. So one day when the baby is requiring the milk, that time it should be breastfed. it's not like it should be separate fixed for this much hours or anything so initially during the first 6 uh, months it like every second early or third hour the breastfeeding should be there that's how it goes and all these things also mainly depend on the mother's diet as you told you in the presentation so whatever the mother eats that is going to affect the baby directly so please choose your foods wisely and go mostly for the home cooked foods please don't go for any outside foods as much as possible during this phase yeah okay. yeah okay. thank you yeah. yeah any other questions
Sarat Kumar sir, you have raised the hand. If any question, feel free sir. You can ask. The ID from Sarat Kumar. Good evening, ma'am. Yeah, good evening. Myself, Vinodini. Hi, Vinodini. Um, um, I have baby. Uh, uh, he is seven month old. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Yes, he is seven month old. Yeah, please go ahead. Yes. We started to give the food. Uh, now he is taking semi solid food. Okay. How many times we can give uh, semi solid food? With the semi feeding. The semi-solid food should be increased gradually. It's not like to push or force your kid too much. And slowly, by the end of the one year, when your kid is going to reach one year, it's better you stop giving him breast milk. So till one year, you can give him breastfeeding. That is compulsory. Not to give up prolonged periods of ages because when you're going to breastfeed their baby for till the age of two or three, now the normal oral foods intake will go low. And the baby will be only dependent on your breast milk. And it's very hard for the baby to stop and as well as for you to stop. So it's better you gradually slow down the breast milk feeding from time to time and start introducing more of solid foods. Now he's seven months. So by the time he reached 12 months, mostly it should be 90% it should be solids and 10% breast milk should be there. Okay. Yeah. Now how many times we can give, ma'am? Uh, um, I'm giving a... Breastfeeding eight times, ma'am. With that, okay. how many times I can give compliment? Complimentary feeds you can give up to like three to four times in a day. Okay, at yeah, at night also we can give, ma'am. At night, mostly, uh, you if you are going to give breast milk, I think it's not advisable. But maybe by you know, evening five or six, you can give him a complimentary feeding. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what are the food items we can give, ma'am? Food at items morning. mostly we'll be giving like mashed food items only. We'll be giving. Okay, so if you're going, maybe like you can give some dal rice or maybe you can soak. Um, I'm generally uh, telling the South Indian menu. So maybe yeah. you can soak some itli and a light samba, which is not that much spicy. Those things you can give. And there are very much uh, ready to eat cereals also available. Those things also you can try giving in the diet. Okay. And, and you can start giving like eggs also, you can start giving chicken, fish, these things also you can start giving the night, but not to add too much flavors because the baby can't accept it. Yes. So, and you can start giving him like fruit purees and uh, fruit juices you can give him. And okay. uh, the vegetables food, like you can give him like carrot because these are considered with the finger foods, like carrot you can Juices give. also we can give him. Sorry? Juice items. Juice items should be homemade. It should not be bought from outside and given. Mm -hmm. So as much as it's uh, made at, at home, it's very much good. But don't add too much of sugars in it because fruits has natural sugar content. Mm -hmm. in it, so it's better you avoid sugars. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, at evening, we can give uh, apple puree. Yeah, you can give. No problem. You can give apple puree or banana puree. Those things are fine. Okay. Vegetable also can give at evening, ma'am. Vegetables, yeah, no problem. This can also be given as like these are finger foods, so these can be taken by the baby itself. So no problem, you can give. Yeah, okay. yeah. Thank you, thank you so much. Yeah. A question from participant side, ma'am. Yes. Eating uh, biscuits is good or bad? Uh, eating biscuits again depends on what goes inside the biscuit if it's going to be with too much of cream or sugar biscuits I think it's not advisable but mostly parents focus on giving only those foods to the kids because kids are very adamant and parents also don't know what to do so whatever is the kid feel like eating just stuff on the kids so it's better you don't uh, feed biscuits when you start giving them weaning foods initially for the few days is fine but on a longer process, it will become an addict. So it's not that much advisable. But you can give from time to time. It's again a 50-50 call, I'm telling. Because uh, India is a place where there are most bis biscuits being manufactured and every household have, have biscuits that I have seen. So it's better you don't introduce those foods to your kids when you're starting the weaning foods. 
so that those things will be prevented. Yeah, Meenakshi, I think you can uh, close the session. Yes. It Hello. Ma'am, yes, I have a question. Go ahead. Uh, actually, I, I love to have very uh, spicy foods. I'm six months pregnant right now. Okay. I always love to have spicy foods in the sense I, I'm adding more number of chilies in my chutney, uh, in my curries and all that. Will it affect my baby? first initially it will affect you okay because you are just six months mm -hmm. okay you will be having gastric issues maybe not now but on the later stages so i i do can understand that you have a lot of cravings for space uh, spicy foods but still try to control from your end because there are women who land up with severe ga epigastric pain so mainly like whatever the foods you eat all the digestive system this all the esophagus will be burning so it's better you avoid all the spicy foods in the diet and if you uh, feel like eating too much of spicy food just try having warm water from time to time so that you'll not be landing up in gastric issues the heartburns will be more during this pregnant time that's why it's better you avoid those foods uh, in, uh, recently i did my anonymous scan where they told me like it is a low lying placenta Okay. Is there any nutrition to treat that? Is there any food to treat that? Or uh, uh, keep yourself keep yourself hydrated. Drink adequate amount of fluids, and take more of protein-rich foods. As I told you in the slide, the placenta is also covered with protein cells. Protein tissues is very much required. So whatever the foods I have shared in the presentation, just try taking in the diet. Okay. Thank Thank you. Yeah. Hey, ma'am. Ma yes. Question from uh, participant side, Preeti Shegar. Can I add boiled food, egg and mutton stock to my baby's diet? She is 10 months old. Yes, very much they can add, no problem. It's high time they add this. Uh, Sujana, so ma'am, uh, for this question, tomorrow's... Uh, Doctor will answer this question, ma'am. We will note this question and we will uh, proceed further. I think you go for uh, next uh, some reaction. Yes, yes, ma'am. Any other questions you need to ask? Hi, Hema. This is Isha here. Hi, Isha. Uh, I have a question. Uh, how does nutrition during the fetal life uh, influence one's long-term health how does nutrition during fetal life influence one long-term health right yeah okay see whatever the foods which you are going to take for the pregnancy period it will affect the fetus when the fetus is being grown in the tummy and after the delivery also it again depends on the how much your birth weight of the fetus is being determined so if it's going to be a lower birth weight, again, the nutritional impact is very low from the mother's side. If the nutritional impact is being very much good and the mother is being fed during the pregnancy phase, I think the fetus will also be good. And on the longer run, all the organs which is being developed from the initial stages of life till the delivery time, it will be very much good. And there will not be any deformations like after the labor. 
and when the baby is being grown up from a uh, from a newborn to the infancy to a toddler to a school going kid everything really play, plays a major role like so for example how they are reading how they are focusing uh, how they are actively participating so all these will determine on the longer run so how they are able to grasp so again like each one will have like different talents so everything so nutrition is really necessary from the time uh, the uh, the family is planning for pregnancy and after the delivery also so it's a long term goal it's not just a short term goal so on the longer run the mother will also be good and again the baby will also be good yeah i think i have answered your question correctly isha thank you so much hema yeah thank you So, if there are no questions, I think probably we can go for the next session. So, I would like to thank once again uh, Himan Arayan for uh, showing up for this today's event. Thank you, Anil. Hi, Himan. This is Deepthi. Yes, Deepthi. Oh, uh, yeah, my niece. You said about my baby's food. She is currently eight month old. So I have okay. introduced solid foods recently, but she is like taking only daily routine, and she is not mm -hmm. ready to accept any new foods, like new okay. fruits mm -hmm. or the food. I am trying different different foods every day, but uh, every time like she just takes in one spoon and she'll vomit. So I'm not okay. understanding at this point of time which food to be given and in which quantity. So okay. Can so. Please help me with this. so this time so when the babies are not eating when you are uh, introducing new foods the babies are not in a mood to accept as we adults accept so if you are still uh, breastfeeding her you can just continue with it and slowly you introduce okay if she is taking one teaspoon and vomiting is also fine no issues but slowly on the later basis they will start accepting this all depends on how you started with the weaning foods in the 6th month so it mainly depends from the 6th month what you started feeding your kid so uh, that only again influences by monthly so that's not an issue there are these are the things where most uh, common thing the parents faces so no need to worry on this the baby will gradually pick up and it again depends on how your parents were during your phase so all the genetics also plays a major role so no need to worry deeply your baby will pick up gradually and whatever the foods we are giving please try continue giving no no any other issues or anything if she is not eating solids maybe you can try giving her in the form of liquids like soups or fruit juices or like thick milk puddings you can give her like custard pudding you can try giving her jelly these all should be home and not to be bought from stores and given to her so in the form of semi solids and liquids you can try giving her if she is not taking fully solids Okay, ma'am. Thank you so much. Yeah. I think I got a, a question in chat box. Shall we give water for a four-month baby? No, it is not required. Only after six months we can start. So till six months, it should be exclusively breastfeeding. No, any other liquids to be given. I guess uh, there are no more questions. So anyway, finally, I just would like to thank uh, Hema Narayan for joining today. So probably, if at all any queries uh, comes up from uh, the participants, I uh, definitely will take up those questions personally, and I will let you know on this. And probably you can also uh, just give them direct reply through emails, if possible. Thank you. Yeah, thank yeah. you, Hema. Thank you, Anushka. For the next uh, session, we'll be proceeding. I would like to introduce Mr. Blessing Kelvin. His interest towards learning psychology was fueled by his desire to learn English literature and philosophy. Once he was directed towards psychology, there are as no turning back. As a student, he learned how just listening to his friends and juniors helped them feel better 
and that was what started it all off. After completing his master's in applied psychology, he joined Vellore Institute of Technology, Vellore, as a student counselor, and has worked there for past seven years. He is a certified practitioner of cognitive behavior therapy, and also believes in the journey of changing behavior by shifting our perception. Over this period, he has successfully completed over thousand counseling sessions, which have impacted the lives of many students from different socio-economic background. This non-judgmental approach in counseling has enabled him to reach out to more students. He is also a writer and speaker who has conducted over 50 workshops, seminars and guest lectures. He focuses on the areas of purposeful living, leadership, mindfulness and the strength in believing in his tasks. His love for learning has made him a part-time researcher and his focus is on the subjects positive psychology and emotional intelligence. Over the years, he has believed in the power of words and that they carry the strength to heal. He lives by the motto, speak life. Now I request Mr. Kelvin to start over the proceedings. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anil, for that wonderful introduction. Uh, just to check, am I audible? Yes, yes, it is very much audible. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. So before we begin anything, I would like to take this time to give my heartfelt gratitude to the organizers of this wonderful forum. I would like to thank Aloka Talent Solutions. I would like to thank uh, BIT Institute of Technology and also Nirmal Law College of Women for organizing and even that is one of the needs of the hours. So thank you so much for organizing. And also, uh, as our previous speaker, Mrs. Ema, was speaking, uh, I realized one thing, one of the incidents that came to my mind was uh, about two years back, we, just before all this COVID began, about two years back, uh, we had a faculty celebration in our college. And uh, so, you know, you have all these cultural festivals going on. And, uh, Myself and one of my colleagues, we partnered to do a dance choreograph. And um, just as we were about to go and dance, the couple who danced before us had picked the same song that we were going to dance. And uh, watching them dance, we realized we were nowhere good as them. And we kind of, I mean, when our turn came, we went on stage and we kind of made a fool out of ourselves. So this platform here, just presenting after. Uh, Mrs. Hema, ma'am, I, I, I'm feeling that same sense of anxiety because ma'am has covered areas which is extremely the need of the hour. She has pinpointed certain uh, criteria and it's beautiful presentation and to follow that up, uh, I do find myself very nervous. So thank you so much Hema, ma'am, for the wonderful presentation. I would also like to uh, render my heartfelt gratitude towards uh, Dr. Ramesh for that wonderful introduction and also towards uh, the organizers from Nirmala College, thank you so much for this. So before we begin, before we move on, I want to, I mean, I do realize that I have, I have about one hard time with me because it was said that the event will go on to 5.45, but I assure you that I will not take it that long. I will keep it as short as possible. So before we begin, I do realize the times that we are living in is uncertain. So this next 30 minutes or 35 minutes or 40 minutes is so, I want to take you all on a journey of introspection because I might not be able to give you the right answers towards what you need to feed your children, but I will be able to give you the answers towards how do you make sure your mental health stays strong throughout this pandemic and after. So that is what I'm going to be focusing on. I am a mental health practitioner, so I will be focusing on the mental health of mothers and the mothers to be. And for, I do realize that we have few students here as well. So I will try to generalize my content that reaches out to each and every one of you. Why we need to focus on mental health? Why do we need to speak about mental health so importantly during these times? Is that I strongly believe that each and every single human being 
has the power, has the strength, has the capacity to fight through any crisis that he is going through or she is going through. But what we lack at times is the belief that we have the solutions. And now if we can have a strong mental health, we can always hold on to that belief and, and we can keep going forward. So that is why I'll be focusing on the mental health aspects of how as a mother or how as a mother to be or how as an individual you can manage your days with your children through this pandemic. So I'm just going to start sharing my screen now. If there are any noise that's coming from my screen, please do let me know in my comments. I'll quickly change it. And I'm just going to hope that it doesn't happen that way. Uh, is the screen visible? Yes, sir. So there's no noise which is disturbing, right? Yes, sir. It is clear. Thank you so much. So the topic that I've chosen for today is Dear Wonder Woman, You Are in Control. Like I said, I strongly believe that each and every individual has the strength in themselves to fight through whatever crisis that they are going through. So that is why my topic for today, or the focus that I'll be telling you, what I'll be doing throughout this 45 minutes of introspection uh, is, I'm going to remind you that you are in control. I'm going to remind you that you have the strength to carry on. So before we move on, I remember March 2020, just as the first lockdown was announced, one of the news that hit all of us, so one of the news that was constantly going on, was how a mother traveled over thousands of kilometers just so that she can get her son home. Now, that's what a mother does. That's what a mother does because she is an epitome of bravery. She's an epitome of love. She's an epitome of greatness. So that's what a mother does. And she's a wonder woman. So the whole session, we are going to be speaking about mothers. But also, since I realize that we have students here, I will be, you know, changing my language a little bit so that it addresses to each and every individual here. Now, I want you to think about these scenarios. I want you to just think about these scenarios. Kindly, please let me know if you can see that the screen has changed. Yes. I want you to, iman I want you to imagine these scenarios. Thank you, ma'am. You're wearing a dress and you're not feeling particularly confident about what you're wearing, right? You're wearing a dress and you're not really confident about what you're wearing. Now imagine this scenario. Now another scenario I want you to imagine is you cook a dish and you're not really happy about how it tastes, right? You spend hours cooking a dish and you're not really happy with how it tastes at all. Now another scenario I also want you to remind you, just imagine is you draw up a presentation, you know you have a presentation tomorrow, you know you have work tomorrow, and you make a presentation and you still feel that you could do better, you still feel that something is lacking there, right? Just imagine these three scenarios for a minute. And as you're imagining, imagining these scenarios, I will try to tell you what happens after this. Just as you walk out wearing your new dress, or just as you walk out not really confident wearing that dress, the first person that looks at you tells you, that you look amazing in this dress. They tell you that you've carried out this dress so beautifully, right? And now you place the cooked dish on the table and your family members tell you that the food tastes delicious. They tell you that you, you know, you've nailed this dish. And another thing is as you are presenting your presentation, once you're done presenting your presentation, people come up to you, applaud you, they tell you how amazing of a presentation that it was, and they also tell you that you've done a great job. Now, I want you to take a moment to think about the two different mindsets that played there. First, you were not really confident, and then somebody told you that you looked amazing in that dress. There is a shift in your mindset. There is a shift in your belief system. And when you really were not confident about the dish that you had cooked, and when someone came in and they told you that this food is delicious, it tastes so good, it just tastes like heaven. When they say you all these things, it boosts your belief system. Your mindset has a change there. And now when people laud, applaud you for your presentation, you feel good about yourself. Now that is my role here today. 
if at all you find yourself you're not really being able to believe in yourself not finding it difficult to understand what to do finding it difficult to you know find the next step now i'm going to i'm going to what i'm going to do here is remind you that you are in control dear wonderful man you are in control that's what i'm going to do here today right we live in a time of uncertainty i mean as far as i know we were not prepared we were not taught how to react respond or live in a circumstance where we were supposed to be home bound because every time you are home as a child you are told to explore you are told to go out and chase your passion you are told to find yourself a job so nobody has taught us to live home bound nobody has taught us to do that so we been living in a fear of uncertainty because most of us are not really sure about what to do next right we're not really sure about what to do next now what has happened because of this fear of uncertainty i just want to remind yourself of these four things what has happened because of this fear of uncertainty our boundaries have been encroached our boundaries have been encroached whatever belief system we had whatever we believed about ourselves everything has been encroached when uh am i audible I'm, i'm sorry am i audible yes sir yeah i'm sorry because I, i do have a very bad network so in in between if there is any break please do let me know okay i'm really sorry for uh, breaking and asking that question but in between if there is any disturbance in my uh, network please do let me know. yes thank you So what has happened because of this fear of uncertainty is that our boundaries have been encroached. We no longer are able to hold on to our belief systems. We no longer are able to understand what we are supposed to do. The fear of uncertainty. What next? What is my next step going to be? Everything just seems so uncertain. So the fear of uncertainty has taken over us. And now, as a mother, I can only try to understand how difficult it can be. because a mother is nature is to protect she wants to provide she wants to make sure that her family is safe and sound so for a mother when uncertainty is it's going to be really difficult so i can only begin to understand but i cannot understand fully how much difficult it can be as a mother and what has happened over this period of 2 years in this particular lockdown is that we've been forced to compare am i doing what other mothers are doing am i doing the right thing a mother should be doing we've been made to compare on the people around us on the things that we need to read in the news so we've been forced to compare our actions now that's another thing that the fear of uncertainty does it forces us to compare ourselves with the people around us and the third thing that has happened because of this fear of uncertainty is we are not able to act on our own terms we have literally forgotten what we are supposed to act upon so i think this fear of uncertainty has really broken a lot of things for us and now the final thing what fear of uncertainty has done is it has taken away the things that we were grateful for we are running short of things to be grateful for during this pandemic and again all these are only because we are living in a fear of uncertainty and as a mother it just gets more difficult because she cares for her family way more than we can even explain in words now, a mother's love a mother's care a mother's concern just goes beyond all boundaries a mother's love is something that you can counter closely to what an unconditional love can look like so what are we going to do here today what is it because every step that we take next is going to be a struggle to fight out of this every step that we take as a mother to fight through this is going to be difficult but let me remind you that every struggle to fight the fear of uncertainty begins by embracing the unknown now there are things that we know about ourselves there are things that we are yet to discover about ourselves which are still there so what we are going to do is we are going to embrace everything that we know about ourselves we want to embrace everything that a mother should be we want to embrace everything a personal a personality needs to be an individual needs to be we want to we want to embrace everything that is known and with that particular known we are going to fight the fear of uncertainty and that's what we are going to be doing today 
just as our session began, just as the session began, what happened was that I think we started off with a prayer song. And I found myself in a very familiar ground because the song that was sung at the beginning of the session was the song that got me through difficult times. So the moment that song was sung, I had a smile on my face thinking, okay, I am in familiar grounds now, right? So now what we are going to do is something similar. We're going to embrace the unknown and we're going to fight the fear of uncertainty. Now, how do we do this? Like I said, because of this fear of uncertainty, there has been a shift in our mindset. There has been a shift in our perspective. So what we're going to do is we're going to manipulate this perspective. We're going to shift this perspective in a way that we strongly believe that we are in control and we are going to fight you. We are going to provide. We are going to be whatever we are meant to be. And that's what we're going to do. Why is it important to rely on our perception? Because during this whole pandemic time, during this whole lockdown situation, during this whole uncertainty period, what has happened is our perception has shifted. And why is it important to work on our perception? Because our perception affects our thinking process. It affects our thoughts. It affects the way we respond. It affects the way we react. So our perception has had a shift. And that has affected our thoughts. And why is it important to make sure that our thoughts are intact? Because our thoughts affect our actions. And when our thoughts affect our actions, what happens is simultaneously, the way we live, the way our lifestyle changes, all that, it's, it starts just with a change in perception. So what we're going to do right now is, like I said, we're going to just introspect a little bit. And we're going to make sure that our perception shifts back in a way that our thoughts are right. That our thoughts are positive. And once our thoughts are positive, what happens is our actions follow suit. And once our actions follow suit, our lifestyle changes. And once our lifestyle changes, we're going to see tremendous changes in our life. Now, what do we do? Now, what do I need to do to make sure that there is a change in my perception? How do I work on my perception? And like I mentioned before, I'm going to remind you of things that you already know. Because by embracing the known, you're going to fight uncertainty. Now, how, how many times, I mean, I'm pretty sure most of you might have seen a hen, you know, taking care of its little chicks. And especially when you look at this hen taking care of the little chicks just as they have hatched, just as they have hatched, when you look at the hen taking care of these little chicks, what happens is, it's very fierce. The hen does not allow anybody near the chicks. Yeah? They, they are extremely protective. They are very, very protective. And only if you are a very known person, if the hen is a little familiar with you, if it is, if it knows that okay, you are the one who is taking care of it, only then will it allow you to come near it, when it allow you to come near it. So, a hen is a very fierce protector of its children. And one more thing is we all know that hens don't fly. But if you see any predators trying to catch its chickens, the hen actually kind of, you know, it brings out that super animal nature and it even sometimes goes to heights that you don't normally see hens fly. So now I want to remind you that each and every one of you have a hen complex. What exactly is the hen complex? Now the hen complex is a culmination of four different factors. Now, the first element that we are focusing on today is the hen complex and this hen complex is a culmination of four different factors. Now what are these factors? Now, like, just like I said, a hen is a fierce protector. They teach their little chickens how to go find their food. They teach their chickens and when you see sometimes these chickens are not really able to swallow a whole big food. So what the hen does is it kind of like breaks it down. So now I'm going to focus on these four factors that influences or the, that forms the hen complex. The first factor is a hen is a fierce protector. Now I know that as a mother, you are very protective towards your child. You are going to be very protective towards your child. And that will make you a fierce protector. You're not going to allow anybody to come and disturb your child. You're not going to allow anything to come and bother your child because you are a fierce protector. Now how do you make sure that that particular aspect or that particular factor of being a protector is enhanced is always be watchful. You know, 
always be watchful. See, some of the questions that were asked today to Imam Ahmed was wonderful because they were very minute questions, but it showed that the mothers were so watchful. They wanted to make sure that they provide a right. So they, they were very watchful with all the small, small signs and symptoms. So as a mother, if you want to be a fierce protector, one of the first areas that you need to be focusing on is please be watchful of any small changes. Now, I'm not saying the signs or changes only in your child or in your children. It also has to be about yourself. If you find yourself showing any signs of tiredness, if you find yourself showing any signs of discomfort, please be watchful towards that because to build your hand complex, to build the hand complex, you need to be a fierce protector. And to be a fierce protector, you need to be able to be extremely watchful towards any signs that is out of the ordinary. Now, the second area that I want to focus upon to build a strong end complex is a calm provider. Now, a mother provides, no matter what a mother provides. Like ever since the second lockdown announced, I came home and I mean, we are two children at home. One is me, I work at a university, and my brother, he teaches in a school. But my mother still treats us like we are 10 year olds or 13 year olds. So, what she does is periodically she gives us things to drink. And I, I, at, at times I see the things that she puts into these drinks. It's random leaves. It's, I don't She puts a lot of things into these drinks. And she always wants to provide, and she provides just so that we are safe. She, she provides just so that she knows that, okay, my children are safe. And a mother, a mother is always a provider. Now, how do you develop or how do you keep providing consistently is by also making sure that your children know that their needs are being met. Because multiple times, if you notice, during this lockdown, there have been issues. I mean, I as a counselor have spoken to multiple parents where parents are complaining, saying that, sir, we provide for our children, but still they are not really happy with us. They say that our, we are not really happy. We are not there for them. So one of the things to improve being a provider is make sure that your children know that their needs are being met, right? Communicate that. And the communication of a mother does not really have to be through words. She knows to communicate to their child even without words. So make sure as a provider you develop this habit of allowing the child to know that their needs have been met. The third factor I want to focus upon in order to build a strong hand complex is be a patient listener. One of the funny things about this hand complex is it is solely it solely revolves around our hen takes care of its chicken. Now, if you see, sometimes the hen is very watchful, you know, it's it's trying to protect its children. And these little chicks, you know, they just kind of run around, they jump over her, they you know, they peck her here and there. And the mother does not really make much of a fuss about it. She just allows them to do whatever they want. Now that's the kind of patience that as mothers we need to be able to develop. Because a mother, when she's a patient listener, one of the aspects that she will learn is she will learn about what the child has learned. That to be a mother that is able to protect, it is also important to learn and know about what our children have learned. So please learn to be a patient listener. And trust me, I'm not trying to tell you how to be a mother. I'm just trying to re-emphasize on certain points that are already known to you. So it just helps you as you go along. Now the fourth factor I want to focus upon to build a strong end complex is be a gentle teacher. Now we've heard that please do not try to enforce your ideas on your child. Please do not try to enforce things on your child. Now I want to say please forget all that. It's okay. It's okay to allow your child to model their behavior after you. Because what we learn is children learn quick through observation. Children learn especially quick when they observe their family. So please make sure that you allow your child to learn your style. How do you react? How do you respond? How do you, you know, react and respond towards crisis? How do you react and respond towards happiness? Make sure that you teach your child your style. And it's very important. Now, if you put together all these four factors, being a fierce protector, being a calm provider, being a patient listener, and a gentle teacher, trust me, you've got yourself behind complex. Now, developing this health complex is a task. 
If you feel that all these four factors are something that you're still doing, make sure you constantly keep doing it. If you feel there is one or the other factor here, you feel you could have you could you know, do better. I'm sure you will do that in the days to come. So the first element that I want to remind you is please build a strong hand confidence. Please build a strong hand confidence. Now I want to take a minute to introspect. If you have a pen and a paper, it's nice. If you do not have a pen and a paper, if you're just listening to this webinar, I want you to take just a minute to introspect on these few questions. The first question I want to put forward is, what areas in my life do I have to address to en enhance my health confidence? Just ask yourself this question. What areas in my life do I have to address to enhance my health confidence? If you feel there is no element left, there is no factor, please. But if you feel that there are certain areas that you can still address to enhance your health complex, like this is your time to identify that particular area. But the second area I want to I mean, the second question I want you to spend some time introspecting is how often do I find myself lost in thoughts that I'm struggling to choose an action plan? The things around us, like I said, there's so much uncertainty around us. How often are you caught up in these uncertainties that you find yourself lost in thoughts? How often do you find yourself lost in thoughts that you're struggling to find or you're struggling to even choose an action plan? How often do you find yourself doing that? If it's very much often, please write very much often. If it's just often, just put it often. If you never found yourself lost for thoughts, just write never. Just think about it. The third question I want you to spend some time introspecting is, am I a believer in the good days are yet to come? Are you as a human being, are you as a mother, are you as an individual, a believer in the good days are yet to come? Because right now, the good days just don't seem nearby. But are you a believer in the good days are yet to come? If your answer is yes, just write down yes. Just think about it in your mind, yes. If your answer is fine, you can still write down, it's fine. As we go on, we just have two more elements to focus on. We'll do that quickly and uh, you can put forward your questions from time to time. Now, I'm going to move on to the next element. The next element to equip yourself, the next element to keep yourself constantly stable, to keep yourself in the right perspective, to be building the right perspective, is to embrace your identity. Now, I know that you've heard about this term identity now. An identity is not merely the personality that you carry, it's not merely what you are doing, but an identity is sometimes something that's enforced upon you as well. It's something that you have embraced as well. An identity can be something that you've chosen as well. Now to embrace your identity, to all the mothers out here, I want to say your identity right now is a mother. You might be playing multiple roles. You might be a headmaster, you might be a teacher, you might be a so research scholar, you might be a student, but when you have a child on the way, your identity is a mother. That comes first. Now, embracing your identity helps you do a lot of things. Now, what happens if you're not able to embrace this identity? I just want to quickly uh, talk about three things that happens when you are not able to embrace this identity. First, if you are finding it difficult to embrace your identity, your responsibilities will begin to look like a burden. The responsibility of your child, the responsibility of the work at hand, everything will start looking like a burden if you've not embraced your identity. But the second thing, if you've not embraced your identity, the chances of you facing a burnout is high. And you don't want to face a burnout just because you've not embraced your identity. So embrace your identity just so that you don't face a burnout. But the third factor that I want to focus upon, embrace your identity so that you do not give up. Multiple times we find mothers, we find students, we find individuals giving up on their dream, giving up on their responsibility because they've not yet embraced their identity. Because when you embrace your identity, you know to what lengths you're supposed to go. You know what the end goal is, you know what the end idea is. So it's extremely important that you embrace your identity so that you do not give up midway through. These are the three factors that you need to remember, that you need to keep in mind about why you need to embrace your identity so that you don't fall into these three traps. I'm going to give a very small way, a small technique or a small simple technique actually, how you can embrace your identity or how you can help embracing your identity on a regular basis. Now, here is this. 
Firstly, be aware of your goal. Multiple times we give up on our identity because we are not we are not able to focus on our goals. We are not able to analyze what our goal really is. You ask somebody, how are you doing? And multiple times you've heard this answer saying, I don't really know how I'm doing. I don't really know how I'm doing. I've had this, I've had multiple sessions during this uh, co-pandemic and where I asked the student, how are you really feeling? And their answer is, not really sure, sir, how I'm doing. So, to, in order to embrace your identity, it is always important to be aware of your mood. Where does your mood stand? So, I'm going to explain this quickly in colors. Now, there are four colors on your screen. There's the yellow color, the green color, the blue color, and the red color. So that the yellow color signifies being excited. You know, it's high energy and a very pleasant feeling. So it's being excited. It's it's just about dancing around. It's about you know wanting to express everything that you're feeling. It's just you know, screaming out your happiness. Now that's the yellow color. That's what yellow color stands for. It's high energy and it's about pleasant feelings. Now the green color signifies low energy but still a pleasant feeling. You know? Sometimes you have these moods where you're just content. You don't really want to scream out loud. You're just smiling at yourself. You're just smiling at your day. You're smiling at your achievements. You're just having the sense of contentment. Right? But that's what the yellow color, the green color stands for. Now, the blue color signifies low energy, but it's also very unpleasant. Now, what happens when you put low energy and unpleasant? Is, this is where we see multiple times that people uh, feel depressed, uh, people are not really able to express what they're feeling, uh, their mood is always low and they're not really at any point or at any state to even tell how they're feeling. Yeah? And that is low energy unpleasant. Uh, then we have high, high energy but still unpleasant, that is a red color. Here what happens is uh, you are screaming at people, you are frustrated constantly, you are having a panic sensation, you are completely anxious about anything and everything. Now, these are the four different modes that we mostly go to. Now, what I want you to do is every single day when you wake up, you wake up. If you can place these four colors in a place where you know you're going to look at, just make sure you look at, you know, for the fact that, okay, when I wake up, I normally go to this. So at that particular place, place these four colors. And what I want you to do is pick a color that reminds you or pick a color that you connect to it. Let's say, for example, sometimes mornings you're waking up very angry. And if you're very angry and if you're just frustrated with everybody, that means morning you wake up, you pick up that color. Someday you are just very happy, you're very cheerful, you're very chippy, you want to go out, be happy with people, that day you pick yellow color. So whichever mood is preferable to you, whichever color you relate with, every morning when you wake up, pick up that color. And now what you do next is, if it is in the blue or red area, so if it's in the green or yellow area, I'm pretty sure your day is going to go fine. At least you've begun your day fine. But if your day is in the red or just do this one small thing. Remind yourself to do an activity that shifts your mood from the red to green. That shifts your mood from the blue to yellow. Something. Just make sure you indulge in an activity. It could be playing with your child. It could be cooking something just for yourself. It could be listening to uh, listening to songs. It could be uh, playing a game on laptop. It could be watching a movie on television. Anything. Whatever you feel will shift your mood from the red and blue color to the yellow and green, please indulge in that. The quicker you do, the better. Now, why do I need to do this? Because the outcome is amazing. It enhances your self-awareness. The outcome of the small activity, very simple activity, all that you need to do is look at a board or look at a screen and choose which color suits your mood and then indulge in an activity that changes that particular mood to another one. But the outcome is amazing because it enhances your self-awareness. With us mothers, multiple times what happens is we, we take care of our child, we protect for our children, we are there to provide, we are there to you know, do everything for our child, but we fail to self-analyze how our mood is or am I at the right state to be able to provide. So this small activity will enable you to enhance your self-awareness. 
The second thing that it does is it allows you to dream. Multiple times, the importance of dream is not spoken much about. Because as mothers, it's important to dream. It's important to dream about a better today. It's important to dream about a better tomorrow. It's important to dream about a beautiful future for your child and as well as yourself. So when you have a good self-awareness about yourself, you are able to dream about the good things in life. You are able to plan about, plan ahead for the good things in life. Now, what this again does, when you embrace your identity, what it does is it builds your belief system. Like I said, the fear of uncertainty has encroached our belief system. Now, when you begin to embrace your identity, when you begin to analyze yourself, when you begin to be self-aware, your belief system is again being reconstructed. So you begin to build your belief system one by one, right? Now, these are small things that you can do, but amazing benefits of it. I just want to take another one minute to introspect on what we just see. Now, if you have to divide your day on a percentage scale, first question, if you, have to, if you are supposed to divide your day on a percentage scale, what is the percentage difference between you being happy and being sad? Like say, for example, if I have to divide my day on a 100% scale, like I would say 60% of the time I'm happy, or 40% of the time at times I'm sad. If I say this, that is my percentage scale. So I want each and every one of you to take just a minute to ask yourself this question. If I have to divide my day on a percentage scale, how often? What is the percentage of me being happy? What is the percentage of me being sad? Right? Another question. Which color? You saw four colors, yellow, green, blue, and red. Which color in this moon meter dominates my day? Just, you know, if you have a pen and a paper, please write it down. If you just listen to just think about it. which color in this moon meter dominates my day. Now, third question. Do you believe that you have the strength to stay strong in crisis? I just wanted you to answer yes sir. Do you believe that you have the strength to stay strong in this crisis? Right? Just take a minute to answer these questions and we'll just move on to the next element. Now there's one more key element. This key element helps you strongly change your perception. It strongly helps you have the right perception towards any kind of adversity that you're going to be facing. Now that is nurture your inner child. Now each and every one of us has an inner child in us. Even if you're 50, even if you're 60, even if you're 40, even if you're 30, that inner child in us is always going to remain intact. Small example if I have to say or if I can give is like you you hear the bell ringing of an ice cream man. Right? If you're staying indoors, you hear the bell ringing of an ice cream man. And there's a smile on your face because you know that there's ice cream. You, know, you don't even really have to go and buy the ice cream. And it just happens that okay, ice cream man is good. Or all of a sudden you're sitting in your room and you start hearing the rain sound on the windows or you know that it's raining outside. You're just happy, you're just cheerful inside you because your inner child always loves to play in the rain. You might not go run and play in the rain, but it's just happy, right? So all of us have that inner child in us. And now one of the, thing, one of the key factors about why we need to nurture our inner child is it, because by nurturing this inner child, we not only build the right perspective, but we begin to celebrate the little things in life. And by celebrating the little things in life, we always make sure there's a constant smile on our face. Right? That's very important. Now, what exactly does it, uh, how exactly do I nurture my inner child? Because in short of time, I'm going to just rush through these. Right? As a mother, what happens is the moment you start getting into motherhood, multiple times, you are not finding time to do the things that you used to love doing. So what I would like to encourage each and every mother here, each and every individual here, please revisit an old untouched hobby. If there is a hobby that you've not been doing for a long period of time, please spend some time trying out that hobby. So revisit an old untouched hobby. Just one approach, a small approach. The second thing is have your power of care. I mean, I'm pretty sure as mothers, you've heard about this term power of So what I really want to convey to you, have your power of gang is always have friends around you or always surround yourself with the right kind of people who will keep encouraging you when you are not really able to do things on your own. When you're finding it difficult, always surround yourself with the right kind of people. It can be family, it can be friends. 
That's your choice. So make sure you surround yourself with the right kind of people. And the third thing that I want to remind you is reward yourself. From time to time, as a Maka, please learn to reward yourself. Right? And I'm pretty sure as a mother, when you when you especially when you're taking care of a newborn baby, the only reward that you feel like giving yourself is a long day's sleep. Right? But just go beyond that. Also. If it's just sleep that you want because you know you're staying up long hours just to take care of your child. So that itself is reward, just allowing yourself to sleep for long hours. So make sure from time to time you reward yourself. It could be by buying something for you yourself. It's okay to be selfish from time to time, just so that you feel good and process things further, right? Spend some time to reward yourself. The fourth aspect, explore. Now, multiple times as mothers, we find ourselves not being able to try out new things because we know that our life revolves around our children. So I think it's extremely important that you also start exploring new things. It could be a new dish, it could be a new TV show, it could be a new habit that you're developing, it could be a new cooking style, anything. You know, whatever makes you happy. Make sure you still keep exploring. What happens is it allows you to just keep nurturing that inner child. Because as a child, you know, when I mean, a child is never just happy with one thing in their hand. They just want to explore the next, next, next. That's how they grow. So I think to nurture your inner child, you also it's very important to explore. So these are just small approaches that you can do to nurture your inner child. Now, just in that moment of interest. What was your favorite childhood hobby and do you still spend time doing it? I said if you have a pen and a paper, please do write it. If not, just think about it. What was your favorite childhood hobby and do you still spend time doing it? If yes, yes, please write down your favorite childhood hobby as well. And the second question that I want to put forward to you is how often do you connect with your childhood friends? If there are many, good, I mean if you do it often, amazing. If you feel that you have not been able to do it, then yeah, send it and connect, never connect, you can just write it down. Then, when was the last time you chose to try something new? It could be your food, it could be your dress, anything. When was the last time that you chose to try something new? Please write down your answers on your own because nobody is going to see these answers, it's just for yourself. And there's one final aspect, I just want to finish my session here. So if you have any questions, please be prepared with it. As a mother, always make sure, or as an individual, always be make sure, always make sure that a smile on your face remains in time. Because the moment you have a smile on your face, it shows that you're confident to face anything that's in front of you. And not just smiling, never stop believing. Now there's this new uh, moment that's going on about about how it's going on. Is strong women never stop believing. That's the slogan that the new moment is going on now. Strong women never stop believing. I want each and every one of you, mother, mama, students, any one of you, everyone who's here, just make sure you put a smile on that face. Even if it is difficult, just smile through. You know, we, we say this, we, we say this thing in council, take it till you make it. So make sure you put a smile on your face, even if it is difficult, because something that smile is going to remind you of the confidence that you are able to carry yourself forward. So smile and never stop believing. That's how I want to end this session. Smile and never stop believing. Now, with that, I can tell you my session. Thank you so much for listening. And if you have any doubts which you are not comfortable asking me here, you can ask me on my personal number or on my Gmail or on my social media platform. I'll be really, really happy to help you out. So thank you so much for listening to me. And yeah, if there are any questions now, you can please put them forward here. I thank our special guest of today, Mr. Blessing Telvin, for his enlightening speech. Sir, you have started up with how to be a mother, a furious protector, a calm provider, a patient listener, and a gentle teacher. Questions you have posted that women have to self-analyze themselves to know their identity. By ending, love and reward ourselves will, will nourish mother's inner child. Once again, thank you very much for great awareness for the young mothers.
Thank you so much, sir. The forum is you open for question and answer session. If any questions, please feel free. Yeah, I guess uh, Jacinda Marie Prince, ma'am. Oh, you have raised your hand. Can please pose the question? Sir, good evening, sir. Good evening, ma'am. Sir, uh, thank you so much for the wonderful session, sir. It was really useful and it is a uh, need of the hour also. So on behalf of the Department of Nirmala College for Women, uh, I appreciate and thank you, sir. Thank you so much, ma'am. I think we have one comment, one comment in the comment section that reads, can you repeat the activity for changing from unpleasant to pleasant? Yeah, I'll just quickly tell you that. So again, we have four moods. We can divide our moods into four different colors. One is yellow, one is green, another is blue, and another is red. So every day morning when you wake up, make sure you place these colors at areas which you know for a fact you're going to Say for example, if it is the living room, you can place these colors there. Or if it is your study room, you can place it there. Or if it's in the kitchen, you can place it there. So whichever room you normally go into, make sure you have these colors put up there. And the moment you look at these colors, just ask yourself, which color is my mood right now? Right? Just ask yourself, which color is my mood right now? And once you relate to a specific color, what you do next is do any activity. It could be just cooking only for yourself, or it could be even again playing a small video game, or it could be reading a book. Do a specific activity that enables you to shift your colors, especially if your colors are red and blue, that enables you to shift your moods from this color to green and yellow. So, if you can do this on a regular basis, like just a little bit every day, will make it a habit on the longer process. So, it's a simple step, but like I said, it has a lot of long term benefits. I think I will uh, answer that question. Thank you for that. So, yeah, if there is any more questions, you can feel free to send it to my mail ID as well, or you can please send it to the organizers of this uh, meeting, and I'd be really happy to answer those questions. So I think there are no more questions. I would once again like to take this uh, time to thank the organizers for uh, putting on this beautiful platform. As mentioned before, this topic is one of the needs of the arts. We need to understand that mothers are going through a lot of crisis right now, especially with the uh, negative news that we share. So thank you organizers for putting on this beautiful platform. And I'm also sure that the days to come, like, 
tomorrow as well. We have two beautiful speakers. I'm sure they'll be able to help each and every one of you much better than we are doing now. So yeah, thank you for organizing this. Mina. Thank you, sir. I express my sincere gratitude to Dr. Ramesh, principal of BIT Institute of Technology, and to Dr. Helen for their constant support and encouragement for this today's two days international webinar on maternal and child care. Dear participants, I remain most grateful for the rapid attention with which you sat through this session. I'm confident that you have learned a new information from today's webinar. Thank you. Thank you all. For tomorrow's session, Dr. Raja Rajeshwari, gynecologist, and Dr. Kamal from Georgia is going to take over the session. I request all the participants to join the webinar by sharp 3 p.m. Today, most of the participants have posted the questions regarding uh, vaccination. Uh, Dr. Raja Rajeshwari, ma'am, will cover the topics over the, the vaccine during the pregnancy uh, for a breastfeeding mothers as well as for lactating mothers. So thank you all. Thank you all. Thanks for participation. Thank you, Blessing Kelvin, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you all. So We'll be leaving right now in the group and we'll be joining for tomorrow's session. And the link will be shared soon. Thank you. Thank you all.